years and coming through the vet course that you are aware you have to to me up about the HS because we have it on about it so frequently too. Um, however, the hazards that are involved with special creatures are a great deal more than those that we normally associate with domestic animals. So today's topic, I'll get to the next slide. Okay, it's the HNS, but specifically related to special creatures. And I've lifted just a little bit out of um, formal fact faculty presentations um, just to set the big scene, but then we're going to drill down into specific hazards relating to specific special creatures. Okay, now there is a little bit of background legislation that you do need to be aware of as veterinarians. It's pretty dry reading, but all of us, all the staff, we do today every year, we have to go through updated changes to the legislation. The specific legislation that relates to special creatures though is very old as you can see here and has quite antiquated language which I will refer to as <laughs> today. Okay, now what sort of special creatures are we dealing with? Now this is a cockatrice and you can see from the stamp on the shoulder there it is actually intended Human consumption. <laughs> um, some of you might be even eating it today. <laughs> um, what is a cockatrice? Well, just morphologically, you can see it seems to be predominantly pig with a little bit of chicken and maybe a pig tail at the end. This particular one succumbed, it was actually euthanized during the exploratory taxonomy, so I believe just really quickly stitched up at the <laughs> <laughs> Um, these pose problems to vets because, number one, you don't get taught very much about these sorts of special creatures and there's not that much in the veterinary literature to go to as a reference point. You know, I could ask, does this have nucleated red blood cells? Yes? No? I mean, I um, What's the withholding period for antibiotics in these? We don't know. But these are the sorts of things we're going to be dealing with today. And I thought we might start with something that looks pretty similar to a domestic animal. This is a minotaur. <laughs> maybe, maybe Pete will discuss this. In general, yes, you should approach a minotaur which is half man, half bull, as if it's a very intelligent, potentially very angry <laughs> Wait, and an animal with a very long, sharp horn 
comes down and approaches your lap, you need some sort of PPE. Well, <laughs> protection like that cricket box. <laughs> Minimum PPE cricket box. Now, cricket boxes don't store <laughs> all types of injuries. So, in general, you probably need something a bit more than that. And minimum standard, and it's ready to hand. Lead, light, <laughs> gowns, like these beautiful vet models um, are demonstrating here. If you could take that out on call, it's a good standby. TPEs. You <laughs> have a suit of armor. That is a very expensive piece of equipment, but if you're dealing a lot with special creatures, a good idea. Or you could do a combination. <laughs> suits of armour and cricket box. <laughs> okay, now suits of armour are useful if you have to deal with these sorts of special creatures. Anyone know what this is? <laughs> Harry Potter, yes. <laughs> okay, hind quarters of the lion. One thing you do need to be aware of Particularly if you're in mixed practice. Anyone know what is the key prey of a griffin? It's a horse. Oh. They really, really hate horses. <laughs> so you must never go from a horse call straight to the griffin. <laughs> Ideally, have about three showers. Um, otherwise, really, really high risk. So that's griffins. Okay, now, anyone know what this picture is? It's remarkable how much this resembles Julian Miller. It's actually a harpy, a beautiful harpy. You'll find this image. What is a harpy? Well, the ancient Greeks knew about harpies. Um, according to some versions of Homer's Odyssey, it was a pack of these Julia Gillards that attacked <laughs> Odysseus when he was trying to get home to Greece from after the Battle of Troy, War of Troy. And these harpies, some people find them seductive, but imagine a pack of Julia Gillards. <laughs> Strange versions of the Squalion and Newton Ward. Um, what was his defence? His defence was to tackle himself with rope to his mask. So rope is useful to have a new car. <laughs> Part of the reason why Peter teaches you all these tying knots <laughs> and things. But you aren't often travelling to your calls on a ship. You might be if you're on a live animal export, I suppose, but if you have a mask, tie yourself to it. <laughs> According to some versions of the Odyssey, they were sirens, not Julia Gillard. Harpy sirens are a bit like Mermaids, and mermaids are another special creature where there is a very useful form of PPE. If you want to hear these stuffy sounds, strap yourself to a mask so that you can't follow them. But, even better, <laughs> industrial strength headphones. <laughs> this is particularly important if you are dealing with mermaids, if you get a call that worry about the water quality, <laughs> you know, all over the tail, they want you to do a scraping, that sort of thing, kind of culture. You do not want to be seduced. <laughs> Every few years there are vets who are reported to the board. It's frowned upon in the profession having a relationship with a patient. <laughs> Trying to get good audio sound, you want no audio sound. <laughs> Sirens, harpies, or mermaids. <laughs> okay, what is this? Chicken snake. Chicken snake. Very good. It's a hybrid. It is a basilisk. It's a very complex creature. Lots of hazards. But this is where I'm going to refer to one of the few still in print medieval veterinary textbooks called Vestury. We need to look up the basilisk. The basilisk, its name means little king because he is the king of creeping things. <laughs> Those who see him flee because his scent will kill them. So number one, PPE. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is not adequate. And it also does not look professional. <laughs> this won't do either, Glenn. Nor this. For a basilisk consult, <laughs> Now, it's not just, look at that high filter respiratory 
mask there. What else is that pet wearing? Why is there something protecting your eyes now? It's not about to do an off down the stock in the No, no, no. Because what does Basilis do? Another hazard beside the pond. He will kill a man simply by looking at him. <laughs> Manticore and Harry Potter, I can't remember. 
Those of you who worry about encounters with pit bull terriers, they have nothing on manticores. <laughs> Personally, I like this image of the manticore because it sort of illustrates well the hazard. <laughs> <laughs> there is a beast called the manticore. It has a triple row of teeth, the face of a man, and grey eyes. <laughs> it, is, it is blood red in colour, and it has a lion's body, a pointed tail with a sting like that of a scorpion, and a hissing voice. It delights in eating human flesh. Its feet are very powerful, and it can jump so well that neither the largest of ditches nor the broadest of obstacles can keep it in. If you come across a manticore or starting call, you have an obligation to the general public to immediately call the police. These are illegal. You can't have these in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> All right, nearly finished. Hazards. Dragons. We haven't mentioned dragons. What's the obvious hazard with dragons? Fire. Fire, yes, but also reputation. <laughs> dragons are very, very timid creatures. They've had a bad rap in the press over the decades. And they are very easy to kill. Be aware of this. Do not take on the care of a dragon unless you warn the owner of the risks. Otherwise, you could end up to shoot a happy that time. <laughs> <laughs> Accidental death wasn't forewarned. Fire communication is terribly important. Now, fire, you're right. You do have to remember about fire. Here we have a vet in really good PPE approaching on the right, trying to lance the tooth root abscess. <laughs> now, this vet is highly experienced, probably thinks it's a doddle, because he knows the dragon is also incapacitated by concurrent cerebellar disease. <laughs> Cerebellum is not responsible for the source of fire, so this bear couldn't see it, it was on the other one, his right flank, he was carrying a fire extinguisher. The one time you wouldn't use a fire extinguisher, notwithstanding the presence of fire, is of course if you're dealing with a phoenix. <laughs> We try it with fish, you know, just replace them. <laughs> <laughs> self replacing. Just remember, they'll be very hot in the new, so very rejected. Okay, we don't have enough time to really go into all the hazards of all the special creatures, like to get called out to, to Nessie. Um, but hopefully, I've just highlighted how important it is to always be conscious. Do risk assessments if you've got time. Try and put in eliminatory procedures. If you don't really need to deal with a particular hazard, get rid of it. Otherwise, put in control measures. Wear the appropriate PPE and be well armed with knowledge because that's the only way you'll save yourself. The next time you see something like this, <laughs> remember it is not an ad for a tyre. This is a fully prepared <laughs> VHS aware vet. <laughs>